hi, my name's David. This is Oliver, my 2000 Jeep Wrangler. Last year I OM617 turbo diesel swapped him. Um, he's been running like a champ ever since. But the past couple of months I've gotten a little bit of white smoke out of him. I wasn't super concerned about that, but I did happen to find a killer deal on a pair, the other ones in the other garage, um, of OM617s that were both about 100, 120,000 miles. Um, they're in really good shape. They came with a bunch of extras, hoses, um, adapter plates, that sort of thing. So I picked those up. I'm going to sell a couple of parts off of them. And then uh, we're going to be re swapping Oliver. Um, I have new turbo. Um, I'm going to put the diesel mech and 7.5 millimeter injection pump back onto the new engine. I painted a bunch of parts. We're going to paint the engine. We're going to clean up the engine bay a lot. Um, this is probably going to be a four or five part series. Um, and this happens to be my first YouTube video on the Jeep. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to go over and show you a bunch of the new parts. All right, so this is my table of goodies. Um, a lot of this has been purchased ahead of time or modified ahead of time um, just to try to make this swap go smoothly and so that I have time to video it. Um, so this is a intake manifold that I sandblasted, painted, etc. Um, I had my buddy Gary at work weld on a piece of um, bead rolled two and a half inch aluminum tubing to it so that I can uh, run my intercooler into it and then also have him block off the stock intake on the intake. Um, I have a new exhaust manifold that I tapped for my EGT gauge. Um, I have the crown jewel here. This is the whole set HE200. Um, this is smaller than both the stock and the usual HE221 that most people run. I'm trying to run a little bit um, quicker spool time because I don't really drive on the road that much. Um, I would like to make this a road trip vehicle at some point, but we're just going to run this and if it happens to be really good on the road, great. Um, I have a aluminum replacement or aftermarket intercooler for a Toyota MR2. Um, this is two and a half inch inlet and outlet. Um, I think they use it as a side mount on the MR2s or a top mount maybe. We're gonna do a top mount. I don't really have the room for a front mount, unfortunately. I've seen it done and I know it is possible, but I don't wanna delve too far into ripping apart my front grill. Um, a lot of this stuff is just aesthetics, so I took off a power steering pump bracket that I had on another engine um, and sandblasted that painted it. And then this is my valve cover. The only thing I've really done to this is drill this out to half inch NPT so I can run a nice big three quarter inch inner diameter breather hose to a catch can. Um, I just didn't want to run oil into the intake anymore. I had done that for a while. Makes all your intake all gooey and disgusting. Um, like I said, a lot of this is just cleanup. So this is a stock thermostat housing that was on this engine. I got stainless bolts and I'm going to try to replace most of the bolts that I can on the engine with either stainless or just new bolts. Um, to feed that top mount intercooler, um, I have Generite louvers, um, which usually they run this way on the vehicle so that it draws air out of the engine bay. We're going to try to run them this way. So hopefully it scoops into my intercooler. We'll see how well these work. If I have to run a different louver or something, we'll figure it out later. Uh, I'm a little concerned about engine temps, EGT temps, but we will see where that heads. Um, a lot of this is just wear parts, um, new gaskets for a lot of this stuff. Um, I have a new Bosch um, primer pump for the injection pump and lift pump. And then I have a Baldwin BF7591 or uh, dash D. This is supposedly, I have to look up the specs again, but supposedly a two micron fuel filter. And it's a water separating fuel filter. Um, it's got a little drain on the bottom here. You can adapt this directly to the stock um, fuel filter setup with a couple of these, they call them time certs. They're uh, M14 by 1.5. Um, I'll put part numbers as much as I can in the description of the video um, just to make it a little easier. Um, 
The only modification you have to do to get that to fit is back of the power steering bracket there's some braces you can either just shave them down a little bit it doesn't need a ton um, I took this to my work and put it on the mill uh, on the bridge port just so it makes a nice even flat surface across the whole back so not necessary I just happen to have the tools to do it so yeah um, this engine is I believe an 83 out of an 83 300d um, it has I think 100 and 2,000 miles on it. Um, I saw it run, no real blow by or anything that I should be concerned of, so this is just going to get torn down, um, painted, and then cleaned up and getting ready to go into the Jeep. So, with that said, let's start the teardown process. That's going to be it for this video. I wanted to get everything torn apart, uh, ready for swapping all the parts between these two engines. I've got a buddy who's going to take my old engine since how it still has life in it. Um, so I'm going to swap on the oil cooler setup that was on this engine onto my old engine for him. Uh, swap on a bunch of other parts just that I have laying around. And then we're going to get to building up my engine with the new turbo, all the new parts, nice and shiny. Um, so that's going to be next episode. Um, thanks for watching. If you guys did like the video, please leave a like. Um, comment if you have any suggestions. This is my first talking to the camera YouTube series. Uh, usually I stay behind the camera whenever possible. So yeah, can't wait to see you guys next video.